Flash games have been a staple of the internet for decades, offering hours of entertainment and distraction from the stresses of everyday life. For many of us, these games were an integral part of our childhood, providing an escape into fantastical worlds and exciting adventures. Some of these games deal with the paranormal, while others explore the depths of psychological horror. But perhaps the most unsettling of all are the games that are based on real-life tragedies, bringing a new level of discomfort and stress to the players. Join me today as we open this gloomy time capsule of the internet. Free Ice Cream The game Free Ice Cream begins with an innocent act of approaching an ice cream truck, but it quickly turns into a nightmare as you are kidnapped by an insane chef. The game plunges you into the basement of the chef's home, tied up and helpless. You have to act fast breaking free from the ropes and cutting yourself loose in the process with a piece of broken glass. You must escape before the chef returns and locks you up again. As you make your way upstairs, you realize the house is run down, boarded up, and filthy. But there are signs of life, and you need to use your surroundings to avoid detection by the madman. You explore the dark areas hoping to find a way out. The atmosphere is oppressive and you can feel the tension building as you navigate through the maze of rooms. The kitchen, with its dirty and moldering walls, is particularly eerie. Eventually, while in the kitchen, you find yourself in a freezer. It's here that you discover a terrible truth. The chef has been storing the body of one of your friends and you realize that you might be next. The game's story is short but immersive, exploring one of our biggest childhood fears. In the end, you escape from the house, but the trauma of the experience stays with you forever. Escape the Boogeyman The only tools at your disposal are a flashlight and a series of doors that seem to lead to a never-ending maze. But be warned, the flashlight's battery is rapidly draining and once it's gone you become an easy target for the Boogeyman. To make matters worse, each door you choose could lead to your inevitable demise. There are no explanations for how you ended up in this nightmare. All you can do is run and hope that the luck is on your side. Be wary of the sounds coming from behind each door because one misstep could be your last.
Created by Psionic, Ghost Base is a spine-tingling escape game that oozes with supernatural intrigue. As a seasoned paranormal investigator, you can't resist the call to explore a rumored haunted mansion armed only with a trusty camera to capture and document the eerie events that unfold. Everywhere you turn, objects move as if guided by an unseen force. Cryptic diary entries litter the floors, and macabre artwork adorns the walls. Flying orbs move across the rooms, portraits with moving eyes follow your every move, and blood splatters and flies infest the once grand mansion. While the puzzles aren't overly complicated, they'll still require your full attention as you unravel the house's secrets and placate the restless spirits within. Ghostscape is a feast for the senses. Each room is filled with atmosphere, with sinister shadows and bloody smears adding to the eerie ambience. The game mechanics are user-friendly, with a handy inventory system that lists the objects you need to collect and photograph. Despite being relatively easy, the game keeps you on your toes as you piece together the story of the house's dark secret. Though not bone-chillingly scary, Ghostscape is a ton of fun and will leave you feeling like you've just gone on an epic ghost hunt. The House series. Imagine walking into a dark, creepy, and fear-inducing house, the kind that sends shivers down your spine and makes you feel like you're being watched. The House, released in 2005, was the perfect game to make your skin crawl. In the game, Players must meticulously examine each room and its items multiple times in order to trigger events. These events are often heart-stopping jump scares or the revelation of new items to interact with. As the player progresses through each room, their heartbeat quickens, signaling that they are one step closer to the climactic jump scare before they can escape. But, the story behind this game is even more chilling. In 1970, a family of four lived in a house that was later discovered to be the site of a mass murder. The family's inexplicable death has left the house shrouded in mystery and fear. For years, nobody dared to enter it, afraid that they too will suffer the same gruesome fate. The house captures the essence of this fear and turns it into a spine-tingling game that will leave you on the edge of your seat. There are a total of five locations. The dining room, where a boy was possibly murdered by decapitation. The bathroom, where the mother's ghost appears and the medicine bottle hints at a possible death by poison. In the kitchen, the hanging doll hints at the daughter's fate. In the living room, the father's portrait falls and a hidden confession reveals that the wife possibly shot him. The tragedy of the house revolves around a family that was torn apart by the fatal illness of the mother. She was suffering from cancer and undergoing treatment, but the fear of losing her loved ones drove her to madness. As her paranoia escalated, she plotted to keep her family with her in the afterlife, and so she committed unspeakable acts. 
The mother's insanity reached its peak on her birthday when her family had prepared a party for her. Instead of being grateful, she took this opportunity to execute her twisted plan. The mother's final act was to take her own life. The game leaves it unclear as to how she died, whether it was self-mutilation, medication overdose, or drowning in the bathtub. Her family's spirits remain trapped in the house as she had planned, and they seem indifferent to the player's presence except for the mother who repeatedly attacks the player. This behavior can be attributed to her insanity, or perhaps to her desire to protect her family and home from intruders. Through clues left in the game, players can deduce that the family's tragedy took place in the year 1982. The mother's cancer treatment was scheduled for Friday, March 5th, which was the date that fell in that year. The game's story paints a grim picture of a family shattered by illness, paranoia, and madness, leaving players to explore the aftermath of a horrific tragedy. Purgatorium was published by Pastel Studios in the year 2012. It will take you on a journey through a dark and twisted memory. You'll follow the character Bill Riddle, who awakens in a child's room, surrounded by familiar toys, portraits, and objects like a Winnie the Pooh rug. But something is off. There's a bloody doll on the crib and a pale apparition of a woman sitting in an empty rocking chair. As you look out the window, you see the depiction of a bloodied man hinting at something sinister. But, the true horror is yet to come. Eventually, as you think you've managed to escape, you come across a gravestone with your name on it, Bill Riddle. Memories start to flash before your eyes and you remember vivid flames, your child, your wife and your own bloody hands. Then a newspaper article titled Family Slaughter confirms your worst fears. 
It tells the story of a mentally ill husband named Bill Riddle who barricaded himself with his family in the baby's room and mutilated them with household tools. The police arrived on the scene to find the house on fire and all three family members dead. As you progress through the game, you start to realize that you're actually reliving the horrific events on that night through the eyes of the murderer. Every clue and memory brings you closer to the shock and realization that you were the one who committed the gruesome murders. The Ex Mortis series. The Ex Mortis series is a trilogy of point and click horror games created by Ben Leffler. The first game begins with the protagonist waking up in the woods, confused and with no recollection of how he got there. As darkness falls and the cold sets in, we spot a nearby house through the leafless trees and seek shelter within its walls. As we investigate the home, we come across a diary left by a previous hunter, who also sought refuge there. The hunter recalls hearing voices, the voices of the Exmortis, which demanded that he murder five hikers who were expected to pass by in the near future. This was a requirement to bind the supernatural world with the real world. The diary entries revealed that the house was alive, and the hunter felt as though it was controlling him. As we explore the various rooms in the house, we uncover the dark history that surrounds us. The atmosphere is heavy, with each new discovery adding to the feeling of dread that builds within us. The game is punctuated with jump scares that are expertly executed, leaving us on the edge of our seats and anticipating the next terrifying encounter. The art is outstanding, with each location beautifully rendered to create a truly immersive experience. The storytelling is masterful, with each diary entry and discovery building up on the previous one to create a sense of urgency and desperation. At the end of the game, armed with an axe, we make our way through a tunnel, only to be hit with a final jump scare.
The Exmortis series stands out as a true online Flash experience, and Ben Leffler has created something truly special with this trilogy of horror games. Dark Cut Step into the blood-soaked world of Dark Cut, a surgical simulation game that takes you back to the horrors of American Civil War. Developed by Justin and John from the website Armor Games, Dark Cut has become a cult classic among online gamers with its gritty and realistic depiction of life on the battlefield. As a battlefield surgeon, your task is to treat wounded soldiers and save their lives using surgical tools such as scalpels, tongues, and bone saws. With the patient's survival in your hands, you must administer anesthesia, monitor vital signs, and manage bleeding to ensure their survival. Dark Cut's haunting atmosphere immerses you in the horrors of war, with its depiction of realistic injuries and surgeries that make you feel like you're truly on the battlefield. The game is accompanied by the themes of mortality and the harsh realities of war, making for an intense and unforgettable experience. Hotel 626 The horror of Hotel 626, which was created by Doritos, was not just in its twisted creatures that lurked within its walls, but in the way the game seemed to invade every aspect of your digital life. The game demanded access to your microphone and camera, forcing you to be immersed in its terrifying world in a way that felt all too real. There was a scene in which you found yourself trapped in the elevator with a creature that could only be seen and escaped through the flash of your camera. The elevator was claustrophobic and the creature's presence felt palpable. The only way to escape was by taking pictures of it with your camera flash, but even then it felt like a risk, as it would give away your position and made you vulnerable to an attack. But the worst was yet to come. In a moment of panic, you accidentally stumbled into a baby's room. The room was shrouded in darkness. Your computer's microphone was activated and you had to remain quiet or risk being killed by the baby. The tension was almost unbearable as you tried to navigate the room without making a sound.
As you progress through the game, the sense of dread only grew. The hotel seemed to be alive and it was closing in on you. At a later stage of the game, they would even call your house or cell phone with clues on how to beat it, but even then it felt like a trap. If you managed to make it out alive, they would walk you through a room filled with photos. These photos were of other players taken from their webcam while playing the game. Among these photos, if you were careful enough, you would likely find your own, realizing that the game had been watching you the whole time. The horror of Hotel 626 was not just in the jump scares and twisted creatures, it was in the way the game made you feel like you were part of its world. It invaded your digital life and it felt like it was watching you even when you weren't playing. A title that can no longer be found on the internet. The Grudge Flash Game The Grudge is a point-and-click flash game designed by Sony Pictures Entertainment as promotional material for the movie. You play as a lonely maid, tasked with filling in a new role in a house with a dark past. As you enter the home, you are immediately struck by the eerie atmosphere. The air is thick with a sense of dread and you can't shake the feeling that something isn't right. As you begin your duties, the tension builds with each passing moment. The note, left for you at the entrance, is brief and to the point, tasking you with changing the mother's sheets in the bedroom, making sure she eats dinner, and doing laundry upstairs. Shadows flicker in the corners of your vision, and strange movements catch your eye in the mirrors. You try ignoring the growing sense of unease, but it's impossible. As you move through the house, you stumble upon clues that reveal the dark past of the property. The torn photograph, the voice message, and the strange noises all hit at something malevolent and terrifying. The fear grows with each passing moment, and the background noise of a sinister but familiar growl only serves to increase the tension. The horror aspect of the grudge is visceral and intense. It feeds on our fear of being alone in the dark, in an unfamiliar place with no one to turn to.
The fear of the unknown, of things lurking in the shadows, is amplified to an extreme level, making it impossible to ignore. Konnichiwa. Matthew. And Jennifer. Aren't around. Leave a message. Hey guys, it's Susan. Matt, are you there? Scott. Okay, well, I'm leaving work now, so I'm trying my cell or give me a call at home later. I'm just a little worried about mom. I, I just want to make sure she's not As you make your way to the bedroom to change the sheets, the atmosphere is thick with fear. The blood-stained sheets are a horrifying sight, and you can feel the ghostly presence around you. Covetous, a surreal horror indie game that explores the psychological and moral implications of existence and survival. The game's protagonist is a parasitic creature, possibly a fetus, that lives inside its brother's body, feeding off of him from the inside. As the creature consumes more of its host, it grows bigger and bigger, and in between each level it narrates its story. The game's story culminates with the player having to make a choice between either breaking out of the brother's body and living instead of him, or giving up and dying, allowing the brother to live on. The game's focus is less on gameplay and more on the story and themes of the game, with its poor pixel graphics adding to the overall creepy atmosphere. The protagonists quote, I never desired welfare status, only existence, highlights the primal nature of the creature's drive to survive, despite its parasitic and horrific nature. 
It raises the question of whether the creature is inherently evil or simply driven by natural instinct to survive. The game also explores the psychological aspect of existence and survival as the protagonist's narration gives insight into its thoughts and emotions. The creature expresses a desire to live, but also expresses regret and guilt over its actions, suggesting a level of self-awareness that complicates the moral implications of its existence. Ultimately, the player is left to grapple with the moral dilemma of choosing between the survival of the creature and the life of its host, adding a layer of complexity to the game's themes of existence and survival. Its creepy atmosphere, combined with its simplistic gameplay, makes for a memorable experience that raises deep questions about the nature of life. a popular video game your children may have come across. It is free, it is online, and it allows kids to torture. We have to warn you, these images are pretty disturbing. The Torture Game is a Flash game that was released in 2008 on the Newgrounds website. Its sequel, The Torture Game 2, was released in May of that same year. Both games were designed by Seaman and are part of the body game genre which typically involves the player harming or killing a character in various ways. The Torture Game 2 allows players to torture an androgynous character using a variety of tools including a rope, razor, guns, a chainsaw, spike, and paint. Health decreases at different rates based on which tools are used and where. For example, a razor can be used all over the character's body and to remove all of its skin without killing it, whereas a shot to the head or the heart will instantly kill it. It is also possible to customize the character's face using a picture from the internet. The game's presentation allows for very graphic torture, with blood splattering and the victim screaming when stabbed or killed. However, there is no music in the game, and the black background creates a morbid and eerie atmosphere. Eventually, it won the June monthly contest despite being submitted in May, and as of March of 2010, it had over 5.7 million views and an average review rating of 9.2 out of 10. It was featured in the Gadgets and Flash Portal History Collections and was nominated for the 2008 Tank Awards. The Ugly The Ugly is a flash game that will make your skin crawl with its eerie atmosphere and suspenseful storytelling. As you step into your home, the door is open, there is TV static, and even a small patch of splatter near the light switches. You know that something is wrong, but you can't quite put the finger on it. The sense of being watched is overwhelming and every step you take makes you feel like you're closer to your demise. As you move through the house, the tension builds and your heart races with each passing moment. You know that you're not alone and you must be careful not to make a sound. The questions you're asked are like a game of Russian roulette and you can feel the weight of each decision on your shoulders. The thought of making the wrong choice is terrifying as it could mean life or death.
The horror aspect of the ugly is inescapable. It feeds on your deepest fears of home intrusion, murder, and evil at the hands of a complete stranger. The idea that someone could break into your home and harm you and your loved ones is a nightmare scenario that many of us have imagined. The game takes this fear and amplifies it to an extreme level, making you feel as though you're living out this horror in real time. As you discover the newspaper article about Donald, the ugly Dempsey, the atmosphere becomes even more tense. The knowledge that an escaped convict is hiding in your home is chilling, and you feel as though you're walking into a trap. When you stumble upon your father's severed head in the toilet, the horror of the situation reaches a new level. The realization that someone has murdered your parent and is still in the house with you is an unspeakable terror. <laughs> the final showdown between your mother and the ugly is a heart-pumping moment that will leave you breathless. The mother's bravery in the face of such overwhelming evil is inspiring and her quick thinking ultimately saves your life. In the aftermath of this traumatic event, you're left to pick up the pieces and try to come to terms with what just happened. The Ugly is a game that will leave you feeling shaken and disturbed long after the final scene has played out. Pico's School The story of Pico's School began on a day in July of 1999 born and inspired after the infamous Columbine HS incident. In the game, goth kids have shot up the institution and it's up to Pico to save the day. The game, created by the founder of Newgrounds himself, Tom Fulp, was released on the portal and it quickly became one of the most popular flash games of its time. The game begins with Pico in the classroom before the chaos ensues. Cassandra comes and shoots up the classroom, killing everybody except for Pico. Our main character, then, with a desire for revenge, must navigate the school, which has become a literal war zone, in order to defeat the goth kids and stop Cassandra. As Pico makes his way through the school, he encounters various bosses that he must defeat to progress. The battles are intense, with each boss presenting a new challenge. From Cyclops, who he must disarm, to Alucard, who has a telekinetic shield, Pico must use all of his skills and resources to survive.
In the final battle with Cassandra, she reveals to be an alien. Pico must use his wits and reflexes to dodge her attacks and defeat her. But even after the battle is won, Pico's travels are not over. The game ends with Pico facing a new threat, the ghetto bots, who appear in his classroom and he must once again take up arms to protect himself. The VTech Rampage and the Slaying of SH Elementary are two Flash games that have generated significant controversy due to their violent and offensive nature. Both games are based on real-life mass shootings and have been widely condemned for their insensitivity towards the victims and their families. The creator of both of these titles was Ryan Lamborn a then 21-year-old college student from Australia who made the game in 2007. Lamborn stated that he made the game as a form of artistic expression and as a way to provoke discussion about the issue of gun control. The game allowed players to control the shooter and to engage in a simulation of the Virginia Tech shooting using different weapons and strategies to maximize the number of victims. The creation of these games raises questions about the psychological motivations and implications behind them. While some argue that these games may serve as a form of artistic expression or social commentary, others argue that they can be harmful and desensitizing to individuals who might be at risk of committing acts of violence. Gretel and Hansel Gretel and Hansel Part 1 is a gripping interactive adventure that plunges you into an atmosphere brimming with tension and suspense. The story begins with a seemingly ordinary family scene, parents talking in a hushed, troubled tone while their children, Hansel and Gretel, sleep soundly. However, it's not long before a sinister plot unfolds. <laughs> Gretel, awoken from her slumber by the abrupt slamming of a door, peers through a peephole and witnesses a chilling conversation between her parents. Her mother, driven by a heartless desire to hoard their food, suggests abandoning Hansel and Gretel in the unforgiving forest, ensuring their doom. The father, torn between his conscience and the wife's cruel intentions, hesitates but ultimately agrees to the plan. Yeah. 
Armed with nothing but a humble sling, you assume the role of Gretel, who must now navigate the treacherous confines of her room to awaken her unsuspecting brother, Hansel. Your room, a microcosm of the impending peril, holds a fireplace, a window that hints at the unknown world outside, and a wooden rocking horse that eerily embodies the stillness of the night. As you awaken Hansel and share the harrowing truth with him, the two siblings form an unbreakable bond. With a heavy heart, they decide to embark on a perilous journey into the heart of the forest. Every step they take is fraught with danger, as the wrong decision could lead to their demise at the hands of not only their own mother, but also the unforgiving elements that surround their home. Near the end, the tension escalates further as the parents give chase, culminating in a heart-pounding chasing that will leave your heart racing. Your determination to protect your brother is put to the test as you desperately flee from the very people who should have protected you. Finally, you arrive at a remote campsite where you catch your breath if only for a moment. However, the rest is short-lived. The events of Hansel and Gretel Part 2 loom ominously on the horizon. The game unfolds with more complex puzzles and greater interactions with Hansel. Players will find themselves navigating through the dangerous terrains, solving puzzles and facing perilous situations. This part introduces more varied environments including the witch's abode, which is filled with traps and dangers. The world is still very dark and grim, maintaining the eerie atmosphere of the first installment. The Visitor in the pitch black of night, a meteorite crashes onto Earth, birthing an alien entity into our world. This small, yet sinister creature begins its reign of terror, starting with a frog that seals its fate by swallowing the invader, only to be consumed from the inside. The entity emerges, now resembling a grotesque worm, ready to embark on a horrifying spree in a quiet home. With an insatiable hunger, the creature slithers stealthily into the family's home, a place where laughter and warmth once resided, now to become a setting for nightmares. Its malevolent intelligence guides it to solve puzzles around the house, facilitating its path for horror. A family cat becomes its first obstacle, but the pet meets a brutal and swift end, succumbing to the entity's increasing might. 
The quiet hum of the refrigerator buzzes ominously as the entity enters the kitchen, the heart of the home now to become a scene of unspeakable terror. It wrecks havoc silently, manipulating objects with an eerie grace. A spill here, a repositioned knife there, and soon the lady of the house slips tragically into the blade, marking the creature's first human conquest. Undeterred, the alien menace slips through the vents like a whisper of dread. In a fish tank, it finds its next victim, an innocent fish devoured mercilessly. Then, the family pet bird, fueling its grotesque transformation. With each life taken, it assimilates their features, becoming a horrifying amalgamation of its prey. The creature stalks the remaining humans, their breaths heavy with impending doom. One by one, they face their grisly ends, their final moments filled with a sheer terror at the sight of the monstrous entity that towers over them, a creature beyond their darkest nightmares. Its grotesque form a testament to the lives it consumed. Flying into the breaking day, it disappears into the world, leaving behind a house of horrors. The monstrous alien visitor now lurks amongst us, an ever-present threat in a world suddenly too horrifying to comprehend. Haunt the house. As we prepare to descend into the abyss of haunting tales and nightmarish realities in a retrospective of Flash games, let's take a moment to remember a hidden gem. In this unique haven of spectral delight, you assume the mantle of a playful ghost. Your task is to reclaim your abode from a group of cheeky intruders using a quirky arsenal of possession powers. Haunt the House transports you into a playful realm where the supernatural meets the comical, giving you the joyous responsibility of turning everyday objects into instruments of gentle terror. With a simple press of the spacebar, you morph into objects and orchestrate a symphony of light-hearted scares, creating an atmosphere of joyality tinged with a delightful dose of spine-chilling antics. With a simple press of the spacebar, you morph into objects and orchestrate a symphony of light-hearted scares. Before plunging into the looming darkness that awaits the rest of today's list, it was important to remember this nostalgic charm. Asylum 626 In the eerie and unsettling sequel to Hotel 626, brought to you by snack titan Doritos, Asylum 626 takes you on a chilling ride that starts as soon as you input your birth date and agree to the terms and conditions. The game quickly thrusts you into a spine-chilling scenario where your deepest fears come to life. As you enter the game, you find yourself bound to a hospital bed, unable to move. The room around you is dimly lit, the air is thick with the scent of cold metal and disinfectant. Harrowing flashes of x-rays depicting your skull are displayed ominously on the walls as a doctor approaches with a buzzing cutting tool in his hand. Suddenly, your senses are overwhelmed as you're thrown into a whirlpool of terrifying memories from your childhood. Within moments, you're transported to a scene straight from a nightmare back in your old home. You see a figure menacingly walking with a chainsaw, the gruesome sound echoing through the hallways. You hear a woman's horrifying scream, 
a sound that freezes your blood, hinting at the brutal death of your mother. Panic sets in as you find a hiding spot in the closet. Your heart pounding in your chest is like a frantic drum. Before you can catch your breath, you're pulled back to the harsh reality of the hospital bed. Your vitals spike as the medical team frantically tries to stabilize you. Strapped down, you're moved through the dark and ominous hallways of the asylum. Shadows flicker, hinting at the presence of other disturbed patients lurking just out of sight. Adding an immersive twist to this nightmarish journey, Asylum 626 integrates your webcam and microphone, pulling you deeper into its dark narrative. The boundary between the game and reality blurs, heightening the fear and uncertainty with every step you take. As you navigate through this terrifying experience, every choice you make carries weight, potentially leading you to more dangers and darkness. The sense of dread builds, leading you to question what is real as you journey further into the depths of the asylum, where evil waits patiently to engulf you. It is more than just a game, it's a journey into a horrifying world where fear takes hold, refusing to let go. Similar to Hotel 626, its predecessor, this game can no longer be found on the internet. The Animator The Animator, as the haunting silhouette of Dr. Herbert West comes into focus, players find themselves thrust into a world teetering in the brink of darkness. Developed with meticulous detail by Bombarian, The Animator officially saw the light of day on the iconic Newgrounds platform on May 16 of 2005 despite being originally crafted in the shadows in 2004. Inspired not only by Lovecraft's gothic literary tales, but also infusing the essence of tower defense mechanics, the game beckoned players into a realm where the macabre danced freely with fear and strategy. In this unforgiving landscape, players are armed initially with nothing more than a revolver with six chambers standing between them and the relentless onslaught of zombies that threaten to engulf them. Every bullet counts, 
and their rhythm of survival becomes a dance with death, where reload timing isn't just skill, but a lifeline. As players progress, they are bestowed upon the formidable power of a shotgun, adding layers of strategy and intensity to the battle that unfolds. The animator stands as a testament to the early days of Flash gaming, a nostalgic voyage in the time when innovation met horror. The Intruder The Intruder takes you on a harrowing journey, one that explores the deepest recesses of human darkness and paranoia. This point-and-click multi-choice thriller transcends the traditional barriers of horror gaming, ditching supernatural elements and focusing instead on the raw fear that can only be invoked by the twisted facets of reality. You find yourself immersed in a world devoid of color, a melancholy palette of black and white that paints a grim picture of the nightmare unfolding within these walls. The chilling ring of a telephone pierces the silence. A desperate plea from our friend Sarah, echoing the urgency and impending doom that hangs in the air. Your mission is clear, yet terrifyingly complex. Navigate through the labyrinth-like halls of this house, where danger lurks in the most unexpected corners, and the boundary between friend and foe blurs in the shadows. Lightning flickers, revealing glimpses of the intruder, his motives as enigmatic as the storm that rages outside. The ticking clock is your enemy, and every second counts in this game of cat and mouse. The gameplay intensifies, transforming the house into a living entity. It's every nook and cranny holding secrets that reveal the intruder's twisted journey and your friend's frantic attempts to survive. The storm outside mirrors the tempest within your soul. A descent into the basement becomes a journey into the bowels of hell, where your actions can mean the difference between life and death. As you move deeper into the shadowy abyss of the house, an unspeakable horror unfolds before you, a tragic scene that freezes the blood in your veins. You find your friend's partner lifeless at their desk. The once black and white scenery, now bathed in an unholy pervasive red. Your hands shakingly pick up a pistol that was left behind, the weight of it 
both a burden and a promise of protection. And then, a confrontation that you cannot escape, a dance with death that sees both you and the intruder locked in a battle with mercy has no place. The flashes of lightning outside mirror the flashes from the gun barrel. You feel a searing pain, but amidst the maelstrom of fear and adrenaline, the intruder falls, a lifeless husk in the growing pool of crimson. Now, you find yourself before a barricaded door, a barrier that stands between you and Sarah, your friend who had reached out in her moment of darkest need. Sarah stands amidst the chaos, her face a mask of terror, eyes wild with fear, unable to distinguish friend from foe. Each choice is a path that leads to a different short-term outcome. At the end of it all, as the storm outside comes to an end, the haunting ring of a telephone pierces the eerie silence that envelops the house. A cruel reminder that the cycle of violence and darkness is far from broken. Crimson Room Crimson Room was released in the year 2004, making the world witness the birth of a Flash game that would pioneer the Escape the Room genre. Upon entering the Crimson Room, you find yourself walking in a room drowned in a disturbing crimson hue, with no recollection of how you ended up there. The room is alive, almost sentient, as it feeds off your growing anxiety with each passing second. Your only chance of escaping this stifling atmosphere is to sift through the seemingly mundane objects, each now a potential key to unraveling the chilling secrets this room harbors. Each click, an act of bravery, as you uncover items hidden in the most unlikely places. A ring behind a curtain, keys concealed within a window ledge and under a pillow, a power cord in a drawer, and a mysterious box waiting to unveil its secrets. Your journey in this crimson prison is a testament to the human psyche's fight against the darkness of isolation and the unknown. A psychological dance where you grapple with the spiraling fear of being trapped in an unending loop, where escape seems as elusive as the shifting shadows in the room. A game that transforms the mundane into the sinister, reflecting the primal fears lurking in the corners of the human mind. Forago, an experience inspired by the shadowy realms of Silent Hill and the oppressive unknown of Stephen King's The Mist, players 
find themselves navigating a tale of loss and unspeakable horrors, masterfully brought to life by the creators at Godly Mations. On a dark, seemingly endless highway, the story unfolds with Jonathan and his girlfriend ensnared in a sudden car crash. On the interstate, all right? It was all backed up. Well, thanks to you, we're officially stuck in the middle of nowhere. Nice work, Jonathan. Hey, I... Here. Wait, did you hear that? Hear what? I think the engine just made a noise. A deer emerging out of nowhere startles Jonathan, causing him to lose control and leave them stranded in an ominous foggy road. With each step they take, a heavy burden of the past tragedy hangs over them, an old wound ripped open, revealing the painful memory of their children's passing due to a freak accident. As the couple ventures further, guided only by a map salvaged from the trunk of their car, the eerie forest seems to engulf them, leading them deeper into its haunting embrace. The stark divide between them, carved from the tragedy of losing their kid, adds a chilling layer of isolation to their journey. In this haze, they stumble upon a convenience store. A frantic employee warns them of the ominous entities that roam in the darkness, urging them to remain within the deceptive safety of the store's walls. Is there anyone around here? Looks empty. two idiots doing outside get in here what's going on questions later move what is that thing What do you think you're doing? You saw those things. We gotta get them ourselves. It's too late for that. Far too late. They're sending us a message, you see. Our existence as a our existence as the human race is over. These creatures. They're the new masters of this world now. So what are you saying? That this is the apocalypse? I'm saying the end of time? I'm saying that we take what little time we have to prepare ourselves to meet the maker. For does the Bible not mention? The coming of the strange and abnormal beasts setting foot, hoof and claw upon this. The narrative skillfully blends elements of first and third person combat, immersing players into a nightmarish reality where horrifying mutated creatures lurk at every corner. The meteor couldn't be diverted and it crashed into the middle of Strothburg. Then this. This portal opened up and it started pumping the smog into the town. Wherever these creatures come from, this smog must have been their ideal living environment. Now it's starting to spread out from here and it's only a matter of time before it covers the rest of the continent, if not the world. My father tried to stop this from happening. You have to believe me, Seth. Blasphemy! You and your father are raging lunatics. You seek to defy God's law and justice upon man with your puny science? This is it! This is the end of mankind, and I will accommodate him as he sees fit. Seth, he was just a kid. He was just a kid, and you just shot him. Because of what? God told you to? Are you fucking mental? Oh, you'll be seeing him soon enough. Don't worry. You try it. You just fucking try it.
But the forest harbors darker secrets, and soon Jonathan falls victim to its malevolent influence, undergoing a horrifying transformation. His body mutates into something monstrous, yet within him flickers the dwindling flame of his human consciousness. In a shocking turn of events, the store owner, lost to insanity, now seeks to end the woman's life. In a moment of sheer desperation and courage, the transformed Jonathan rises, a grotesque yet tragic hero to protect her. The confrontation culminates in the heartbreaking decision where the woman must face the being that was once the man she loved. With trembling hands, she raises a gun towards him. Tears blurring her vision. A shot rings out, echoing the crushing weight of their loss and the horrifying journey they've undertaken. As the narrative reaches its harrowing conclusion, players are left grappling with the profound psychological ramifications of their choices. The gunshot signifies not just an end, but perhaps a brutal release a severance of their traumatic past marred by guilt and loss. In this bleak yet powerful ending, Farrago offers a chilling reflection of grief, survival, and the horrific lengths one might go to find closure in a world overrun by darkness and despair. Escape from 1428 Elm Street in this game, created by the renowned Afro Ninja, a harrowing journey awaits us. We begin on the steps of a cursed house, with unsettling music and the giggles of invisible children chilling the air. Each step forward is met with a growing dread as we are forced to dwell deeper into the darkness that surrounds this place. Upon entering, a world of grim discoveries unfolds. In the eerie silence, we find chilling messages scrawled on the walls, a bathtub filled with blood, and a kitchen table that tells tales of horrific events. Our heart pounds in our chest as we collect items and solve the puzzles that lay scattered around the sinister house, guiding us towards a revelation that strikes too close to home. A grave that bears our name and date of birth, a feature we inputted at the start of the game. The horror escalates as we venture into the basement, where the notorious furnace stands. But before we can come to terms with this, an even greater terror pulls us in. A TV screen filled with static that ensnares our senses. Here, an unexpected twist takes place. A puff from a joint transports us into a horrifying dream where we find ourselves pursued by the merciless Freddy Krueger.
Breathing hard, we maneuver through the nightmare, avoiding Freddy's relentless attacks. With a pounding heart, we manage to break free, only to be met with yet another test. A desktop computer operating on Windows 98. As we navigate through this piece of antiquity, we find clues that lead us deeper into the terrifying story, steering us towards a confrontation that will determine our fate. As the game reaches its climax, we grasp a pistol tightly in our hands, a beacon of hope in the surrounding darkness. Once more, we are dragged into the nightmare, face to face with Freddy. With grim determination, we fight aiming to free ourselves from the nightmare that holds us captive. With each trigger pull, we inch closer to freedom, until at last, the demonic figure falls, releasing us from the gruesome grasp of 1428 Elm Street. We are left shaken, haunted by the ordeal, a vivid reminder of the malevolent force that once ruled here, a chilling journey through a house that knows our deepest fears, leaving an indelible mark on our psyche, a nightmarish memory that lingers long after the game ends. Don't escape. In the wilderness, a lone isolated cabin stands. You, the protagonist, Wake up in this cabin with a clear mission. You are cursed. By nightfall, you will transform into a fearsome werewolf. The game begins not with a quest for escape, but with a desperate need to imprison oneself to protect the world from the beast within. As you step outside, the desolation of your surroundings sinks in. You gather an axe, logs, a mushroom, and a hidden chain, tools, not for survival, but for self-confinement. Returning to the cabin, the true challenge begins. The door, once a symbol of freedom, must now be barricaded. You close and lock it, pushing a shelf against it as if to hold back your own monstrous nature. The notes you find, the discolored plank on the floor, the trap door, they all lead to more tools for your grim task. As we board up the windows, the fireplace crackles to life, a small comfort against our dire situation. Then you concoct a potion. The ingredients, herbs, spices, mushrooms are mixed with precision, a desperate bid to sedate yourself before the transformation. As dusk falls, you complete your final act. Chains and rope are your last line of defense, binding yourself in an attempt to contain the inevitable mutation. 
the hourglass is turned, and the wait begins. In these last moments of humanity, the silence of the cabin is suffocating, the isolation complete. If done correctly, you will survive the night, but failing to confine oneself properly results in a brutal tragedy. In Don't Escape, the horror is not in the monsters we face, but in the monster we become. The game's brilliance lies in its inversion of the classic escape narrative, turning the familiar into something profoundly unsettling. Deep Sleep series. Deep Sleep, the first installment of the Deep Sleep flash game series, immerses players in a surreal, dreamlike adventure that blurs the lines between reality and nightmare. Your journey in Deep Sleep begins with a sense of disorientation, a feeling that reality has slipped away. In this peculiar world, objects and clues seem both familiar and bizarre. You find a key in a vase, unlocking mysteries hidden in a roll-top desk. Each discovery leads to an ever-shifting scene. The skeletal remains of a past inhabitant whose arm you claim serve as a grim reminder of the potential fate that awaits. Descending into the depths of this dream, you reach a reception area where the mundane act of ringing a bell 50 times conjures an unsettling presence. The basement below holds further secrets, with a furnace that needs to be extinguished. You douse a cloth in water to handle a scorching furnace, revealing a hidden code smeared against the walls. This code is a gateway, leading you through a labyrinth of dark corridors illuminated only by the faint glow of your flashlight. Your path is obstructed by barriers that require a combination of ingenuity and courage to overcome. A pickaxe becomes a tool for liberation, breaking down walls that stand between you and freedom. As you approach the climactic conclusion, a lighthouse stands as a beacon of hope within the oppressive darkness. Ascending its spiral staircase, you place a shiny gem into a celestial holder, triggering a transformation of the environment. The figures you encounter, shadowy and indistinct, are both menacing and enigmatic embodying the mysteries that have pervaded your journey. In a frantic finale, the manipulation of levers at the top of the lighthouse feels like a race against time, a desperate attempt to awaken from this deep sleep.
Shadow Tag, developed by Elvidian for Newgrounds, is a chilling experience in its deceptively simple gameplay. Crafted in just 48 hours, this avoidance game stands out for its ambiance and presentation. In the dead of night, armed only with a flashlight, you find yourself in a seemingly unending labyrinth of shadows and whispers. The premise is straightforward. Locate your car keys in each stage and make your way to the car. But this is no ordinary game of hide and seek. The twist lies in the company you keep, or rather, the company that seeks you. Shadowy figures, resembling children, inhabit this world, their presence growing more pronounced and menacing with each level. These spectral children are not just ghosts, they seek to engage in a game of tag, a game where being it carries consequences far darker than a childhood playground. You cannot run, you can only walk, adding to the sense of panic. The game's levels, though similar in concept, vary in size and layout, each presenting its own unique challenge. The game's graphics add to its eerie beauty, simplistic yet effective. The lack of an elaborate narrative or backstory adds to the mystery, leaving much to the imagination and making the experience all the more unnerving. Monster Basement Monster Basement, a horror room escape game released in 2007, plunges players into a heart-pounding scenario of confinement and terror. In the dim light of a single bulb, you find yourself in the Monster Basement, a place where every object holds a clue to your escape. The room, cluttered with oddities and remnants of forgotten lives, feels like a puzzle crafted by a twisted mind. Your first moments are spent in disorientation as your eyes adjust to the dimness. Each object you encounter, a poster, a bookshelf, a bottle, becomes a critical piece in the puzzle that confines you. As you delve deeper into the basement, the reality of your situation becomes ever more apparent. Among the items, a green key discovered behind a poster, a gold piece hidden in the shadows, and a note with cryptic instructions, each discovery brings a mix of hope and dread. The realization that you're not alone in this basement sinks in, a monstrous presence lurks. Your interaction with the room's phone becomes a lifeline, albeit a chilling one. Dialing, Salvation, and Handyman, the responses on the other end are puzzling. The turning point comes with an axe. As you switch off the lights, the darkness envelops you and the basement transforms into a labyrinth of fear and desperation. A light bulb reveals hidden horrors. The monster, once unseen, becomes a horrifying reality that you must confront. The escape, when it comes, is not just a physical release from the basement, but a psychological escape from the horrors within.
Fueled with ancient myth on the Newgrounds platform, a tale of divine tragedy and cosmic struggle unfolds. Crafted by the visionary creator Amon 26 and released on Halloween in 2011, this narrative was brought to life using the stencil game development tool, weaving a story that reaches back to the dawn of creation. The lore, as described by the creator, is the following. At the very beginning, before the sands of time had begun to flow, there existed two celestial beings of immense power, Oishia, the god of creation, who breathed life into the void, and Gaiosayet, the earth goddess, a guardian of the planet and all its natural splendors. Oishia, in a gesture of love and companionship, created mankind as a gift for Gaiosayet, hoping to adorn her realm with beings capable of appreciating its beauty and wonders. However, humanity's disregard and neglect of the Earth's delicate balance sparked a fury within Gyosit. She perceived their actions as an insult to her being and her gifts. In her wrath, she unleashed her anger, erasing millions of lives in her desire to cleanse the stain of their negligence. Oishia, witnessing the devastation wrought by his counterpart and enraged by her merciless judgment, confronted Gyosit in a clash that shook the foundations of the world. In his fury, he shattered her divine form, scattering her essence across the planet and entombing it deep within the Earth's core, creating a prison so profound that no deity could escape. As eons passed, the echoes of this ancient conflict faded into the silence of regret and solitude. Oishia, once a god of boundless creation, found himself haunted by the loss of Gyosayet and the cataclysmic rift their conflict had created. Tormented by loneliness and a yearning for reconciliation, he realized that the only path to Gyoset's prison was through the abandonment of his divine immortality. In an act of ultimate sacrifice, Uisha chose to sever his ties to divinity, beheading himself above the world he had shaped. From the remnants of his godly form emerged a small red sphere a womb of rebirth, which upon impacting the earth, birthed Oishia a new and mortal guise, stripped of all divine might and destined to walk the earth in search of redemption and reunion. The world that awaited him was a stark reflection of the conflicted history. Humanity, now fragmented into small tribes, hid from the cruelties of an earth that had grown increasingly hostile under the lingering influence of Gyasit's wrath. The planet's surface was littered with remnants of the goddess's power, fragments of her being that had become either arrogant totems of human triumph or had been harnessed by ambitious souls to fashion themselves into false deities. Among these was Uzaza, a creature of misguided ambition, who, wielding the heart of Gyosayit, sought to carve out a realm of his own. Uzaza's dominion was a twisted garden of iron and blood, where the weak were cold and the survivors bloomed into living weapons. This lore, rich with themes of creation, destruction, love, and redemption, invites players to travel a world on the edge of oblivion seeking to mend the broken bonds of divine beings and to explore the depths of sacrifice and the possibility of rebirth.
Arrival in Hell, a point-and-click horror game set in the claustrophobic confines of a prison overrun by a monstrous creature. Our story begins as you awaken in a prison cell. Two bunk beds stand as silent witnesses to the nightmare that unfolds. As you explore, a chilling scene cuts through the silence, a police officer helpless against the monstrous entity roaming the hallways. Help! Help! Is anybody there? This creature, with flesh that burns through matter like acid, sets the stage for a desperate fight for survival. You use the creature's flesh to cut through the prison bars. Freedom seems close, yet another obstacle emerges, a disturbed fellow prisoner. Through manipulation and persuasion, you acquire a spray deodorant, a small but crucial item in your inventory. The hallways bear the grim evidence of the creature's rampage with the lifeless bodies of police officers marking your path. Each interaction is a step closer to escape or demise. A chance encounter with a dozing officer offers a fleeting sense of security, shattered in an instant as the creature bursts through the wall, claiming yet another victim. Hey man, did you hear something? I don't know, I think so. Oh God. Oh God. Your journey is not one of heroism. Survival comes at a cost. In a moment of ruthlessness, you sacrifice an inmate, using him as bait in your desperate bid for freedom. The final confrontation is a blaze of fire and fury. Armed with only a deodorant and a lighter, you face the beast, igniting it into flames. But survival demands a greater sacrifice, the destruction of the compound itself. With gas cylinders, you trigger an explosion that tears through the prison, obliterating the creature and your prison alike. Arrival in Hell is a journey through fear where survival comes at the cost of humanity. And I hope you're not afraid of the dark. They do a thing where they turn off all the lights so you can see how ridiculously dark it is down here. You can't even see your own hand in front of your face. Oh, also, there's this giant pokey rock that looks kind of like a teddy bear. Oh, anyway, happy birthday. This is the first half of your present. I'll give you the second half when you least expect it. <laughs> here we are. Let me just open this door thingamajig here and... Aha! Uh -huh. Welcome to the Cablad Caverns. Please follow me out of the elevator and let's begin the tour. Never-Ending Light, the enigmatic world of the never-ending light, a flash game that takes us deep into the heart of an otherworldly cavern. 
Our journey begins with an innocent birthday trip to the Cobbled Caverns, a place shrouded in mystery and known for its peculiar rock formations. Our guide mentions the infamous Pebbles Nest and the oddly adorable yet ominous formation known as the Spawn of Hell resembling a teddy bear. But don't let its name fool you, there's nothing cuddly about this place. As we delve deeper, our guide prepares us for the highlight of the tour, a moment of complete, total darkness. Imagine, if you will, standing in a void so dark you can't even see your hand in front of your face. It's in this darkness that the true terror of the Cad Caverns begins to unfold. Everyone okay? No one is freaking out? Ha! This is gonna be better than usual. Imagine what it's like for the creatures that actually live down here. Most of them don't even have eyes, so they rely on their other senses. Just swimming around, here in the world. Well, anyway. Paul, let's get these lights back on, okay? <laughs> Polly! Come on, Paul. If this is about last night, there are worse things in the world than Pepto-Bismol Pink. Probably. <sighs> well, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. If you will follow me back to the elevator, we'll see if we can get your tour rescheduled once we have this worked out. The elevator has a backup generator, so it should work, even without power. Let me grab my flashlight, and we're off! Get the flashlight! The lights go out, and we're plunged into an abyss where even the slightest sound echoes in the haunting silence. Only to reveal the horrors left behind by the creatures that lurk this gravesite. Our tale takes a turn as we stumble upon a hidden truth, the generator, disconnected, a wire leading into the unknown. And then, the unexpected, encounters with beings, otherworldly and strange, offering deals and threats alike. In the heart of the caverns, we uncover a disturbing reality. Our existence begins to mirror the creatures dwelling here. In our quest for exploration, have we become the monsters ourselves? As we emerge, forever changed, one question lingers. What else lies hidden in the shadows, in the never-ending light? This journey through the never-ending light reminds us of the thin veil between curiosity and horror. As we leave the cat caverns behind, we carry with us the chilling reminder that sometimes the most terrifying monsters are those we bring with us in our minds. Alice is dead. The eerie and twisted world of Alice is dead, a dark reinterpretation of the classic Alice in Wonderland. In this series, we follow the rabbit, a mercenary caught in a web of deception, memory loss, and betrayal in a nightmarish wonderland. Alice is Dead is a celebrated Flash game trilogy created by Laura Strum Games, hosted on Newgrounds, that revitalized the traditional grimification of Alice in Wonderland. Renowned for its exquisitely drawn artwork, eerie and cinematic music, it marries the enchantment of classic Disney movies with the dark undertones of gritty horror.
the series, which debuted with its first episode on September 14, 2009, followed by the second on January 13, 2010, and concluded with the third on September 10, 2010, invites players into a richly convoluted plot. Despite its complexity, the storyline rewards those who delve deep, offering secrets scattered across all episodes. The Rabbit, a part of a mercenary group led by the Mad Hatter, finds himself entangled in the Oyster Cloud Project, a sinister plan to merge the world above with Wonderland. Working closely with Professor Burr, the Rabbit, though questioning little, grows fond of his partner Alice and Burr's daughter. But darkness looms as the Hatter sends Alice on a lone mission, only to later order the Rabbit to kill her reluctantly agreeing to spare her from a worse fate at the hands of their enemy, the Queen. The rabbit's journey into the abyss begins. In a surprising turn of events, 2021 marked the announcement of Alice's Dead, Hearts and Diamonds, a complete overhaul and expansion of the original trilogy. 